So hi, everyone. Um, I'm really excited about this interview today with Ciel Utberg. And um, could you pronounce your name correctly? Uh, Ciel Utberg. OK, that's, uh, that's much less American sounding than, uh, than the way I pronounced it. So, uh, so we, both have, uh, we both have cluttering, and we've, uh, we, we both made um, quite a few videos for, uh, for YouTube. And um, we're, uh, um, we're, we're like amateur uh, YouTubers. So, um, so, um, so and, uh, uh, and then uh, CL is um, really, really fascinating. Um, and, uh, and I'm really excited to talk about, um, uh, like just a lot of stuff, like, uh, like, like your work on the train and, um, and, and that kind of th stuff. So, so before we talk about cluttering, um, can you, uh, um, can you talk about your job? Well, I'm a tram driver. <coughs> I drive tram, sweet cars, trolleys. Uh-huh. I've been doing for, uh, since 1986. Some, uh, with some, uh, mostly full time. A few years on the part time, but most of the time full time. And it also we drive in, in mixed traffic. So uh, you have to basically be on our toes in, in like just in city center, you have to be on our toes. But as a city center, you can just you can relax more. And um got two lines going uh, out of town on their own right away. They're like railways, you really can relax. And I just like trams because they're my hobby and then also my work. My job. So, did you uh, did you like trams before you got the job, or yes. um, it, um, it, and and uh, what's what, what are your earliest memories of liking trams? Uh, how to say really? Um, actually, I have a brief memory of going to the. Uh, to a, a, a zoo outside town, small zoo, and on the next street there was a piece of a piece of road with three 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 trams stacked on it. And I look on these trams; it was very strange trams in the middle of nowhere. And somehow that that made me uh, kind of interested in travel. It didn't really take off until uh, I really grew up. Like in in high school, I really became like a tram person in high school. And I applied a few times, but they didn't get the job. But uh, in uh, six, when I applied, I got a job because uh, back then we were desperate people. I took everything they could, could, I could walk. You know, they have two eyes, two, two hands. Can, can you talk? Can you can you count? You're in. You know. <laughs> so I've been been there. I've been there since since then. Cool. And um, so so how many people can fit on the tram, or, or how many people are supposed to be able to fit on the tram? It depends on the model, actually. Um, I won't have to check because I'm from the way. Okay. Um, okay. There's a little book here, this little Bible, you can say, uh, which has. Um, and then uh, which of those words means tram in um, nor, um, it's it's Norwegian. Norwegian locomotives and, and uh, motor cars, uh, 2017. OK, so look, look is short for locomotive. OK. Goes up. The oldest trams uh, can take um, So it's 72 seated and 80, uh, 66 standing. The newest one, the largest ones take um, um, 88 sitting and, and uh, 106, not, and 208 standing. Uh, okay, and and is it? Um, I'm um, I'm not familiar with um, trams in in Norway. Is there? Um, can you talk to the passengers, or is there uh, like like um, door that you have to open to? Uh, we used to uh, have uh, ticket sales on board the tram. Okay. We used to come in and buy tickets from us, but uh, we quit that a couple of years ago because there was no point in doing it anymore. It cost more than, than it, it cost the company more than it cost to, to and then, then it got uh, uh, income as from the tickets. 
So uh, we're going to quit 10 tickets and with the uh, Corona uh, pandemic, mm -hmm. it's not taking people into the first door, door completely. Uh, there, was, there was like a, a, a uh, plexiglass door between us and the passengers. So they don't bug us anymore. <laughs> Uh, okay. Of course, I think some of us talk to them uh, like in, in person if, I, if like on the end step or something. And although I use the PA system, if, if everything had to, to anything had to tell them. Cool. And um, do you do you like trains also, or, or just trams? I like trains too, um, because um, um, this this magazine I can't find right now. It is it is magazine called. Uh, uh, post Bure, which means uh, on track um, for the Norwegian um, Railway Club, which is a national uh, railway enthusiast club, which I, which I do layout on four times a year. I like trains too. Uh, 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 that's cool. Um, I do. Um, I do too. Because I, uh, when I was growing up, then uh, there, there's my house right here. Um, the house was across the street, and then behind the house was across the street. There was a there was a rail um, a railroad track, and um, in um, in in the U.S. there aren't very many like hardly anyone that like rides uh, rides the train. Um, the, uh, there's um, there's Amtrak, but Amtrak is about as expensive as flying. Um, and um, and then when I moved to Thailand, then. Um, then, th then you can take a like two-hour train ride for thirteen baht, which is about fifty cents. Yes. Um, so, so, um, so, so I was um, I was just super excited uh, because um, and, and Thailand has kind of old-school looking trains. I, I'm not sure how old they actually look, but they look or, or how old they actually are, but they look very, very old. Yeah. Um, so, um, so, so it's kind of like um, it's kind of like something that I missed out on like fifty years ago in America. Um, that um, um, they're still in Thailand today. So, um, so, so as soon as I saw, um, like I was walking, I was walking around Bangkok, and I, um, and I just saw a train, and I was like, "What it, is that? What I think it is? Like a like a passenger train?" Um, so, so I wanted to, I wanted to go on it no matter what the cost. And then when I found out the cost was fifty cents, then I was like, "Whoa! I'm I'm going to be riding these trains every week." But 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 they're uh, they're, uh, they're pretty slow and um, and um, and pretty, um, um, pretty. Um, uh, um, what, uh, uh, what's the word for like, uh, like, like? It smells like a lot of exhaust or whatever's on 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 the train. Um, so, uh, so, so anyway, I've only I've I've only actually ridden the um, Bangkok trains a few uh, a few times, but they're um, they're just really really cool. Uh, speaking, of tra uh, speaking of trains, man, America used to have a great train system. But uh, the passenger trains got the uh, more or less killed off by, by by cheap air travel, and of course mm -hmm. the, the huge uh, highway program that started in the fifties also killed off lots of trains, <clears throat> and also also, also interurban systems in, in America, like trams running between cities, mm -hmm. like trams tram, like almost like in the, like in the city trams that's the word, and also got killed off by by the, that huge um, motor explosion in the fifties. So US, uh, the US has a, has a great history, but it's all mostly forgotten now, but it is there. So, yeah. And, and so, um, do you, are your trams on a track? Yes. And, um, and, and so uh, does it look like a, uh, does it look like a train track or, or what does the, what does the tram track look like? Both, uh, like train tracks outside its city. Let's show a picture here, actually. Um, See here on the top, on this picture here. Ah, okay. Certain train tracks, but here in the city, um, the tracks are embedded in the, in the streets. So uh, in the street, they're just uh, like uh, shiny tracks in the street, and the city outside the city is like train tracks, depending on depending on line. But yeah. Cool. So uh, so so how fast? How fast does your tram um, get up to? Uh, they're good for 70. Well, 70 outside city, of course. 70 kilometers an hour? Yes. There was, uh, uh, for, uh, some, some years ago, there was a line going outside the city where, where we could ride night trams in the weekends. Uh -huh. so one of the long, long straight 
especially used to give the tram all the oil it could get. It's going to see the go to 70, 80, oink, down to zero, and up to 10. So that's when I stopped applying power. I figured, I figured, so I figured I'd be doing 90. <laughs> but uh, oh. the uh, regular speed of max speed is 70. Oh, okay. So, 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 so is that is that how fast you get up to when you're driving regularly, or or, or just on a regular route? Then how fast do? Yes, on a route, you can do seventy on a regular basis. Yes. Okay. Okay. But otherwise, it's, it's mostly fifty, and and uh, and uh, and um, yeah, CD is usually uh, mostly forty, or less thirty, or sometimes sometimes thirty, forty. You know. Not more because you, you can't go 15 in a city streets. That's too, way too fast. <laughs> cool. And 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 do you um do um do you, um, do you get do they track how far you drive how far you drive like do you know how many kilometers you've driven the tram so far like in your life? I could probably uh, uh, calculate because now, now I've got Google uh, Google uh, tracking my, my my daily daily um, work. You know, right? Uh, but so I've probably been, been driving to the moon and back, you know, through, through my career altogether. Cool. And and does does Google does Google Google recognize that you're on a tram or um, because, um like, so. like like Google Google will make guesses. Um, are are you in a car? Are you in a are you on a bike? Are you walking? Um, what is, uh, what is a guess for your uh, for your tram? Yeah, I guess it's actually that the amount on the tram does get correct. It does guess guess correctly. Oh, that's uh, um, that's really cool. Google has, you know, I think everyone's pie now. So. <laughs> yeah, I um, so so I used to I used to really heavily contribute to Google Maps, and uh, uh, like like with Google Maps, then anyone can uh, yeah. like, like if a business doesn't have a picture. Um, then, then you can take a picture and upload it to Google Maps. And yep. then the cool thing about, um, especially if you're the first person to upload a picture, then yep. your picture becomes that business's main picture. So, so I really, uh, I really like that, and I, um, I, um, I got their like Google's highest ranking for Google Maps um, uh, people. Um, so, um, but uh, uh, but but I haven't really done very much in the last like um, like year. I'm I'm focusing more on YouTube. Um, yeah, I've seen YouTube. Yeah. But um, but but it's really it's really interesting all of the all of the AI um, be, um, because I think I think Google Maps has maybe more AI that um, like applied to it than any other part of Google. Yeah, sure. sure. Um, that um, that uh, uh, that they just uh, uh, they just have just an an immense amount of processing like like AI processing that's going over everything um, going over the pictures you upload the um, yes, yes. all of the data and you know, I, I, I uploaded, uploaded some old pictures a while ago to, to, to my Google, Google photo accounts which didn't have which didn't have any any, any um, geolocation on them but Google found where they were from even so it must have seen a picture and written, AI must have picked this, this from this place which was correct too yeah. kind of scary <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully, um, hopefully Google's um, hopefully Google's good at um, at like controlling the AI. Uh, um, you've seen the movie Tron, like like the old movie Tron, right? Where uh, um, and whenever I think of Google, especially Google Maps, I always think about the uh, the master control program. Like, uh, yeah. like there's a um, there, uh, there's a there, there's a scene. It's in the beginning of Tron and then the end of Tron where uh, where where the guy, uh, like the president of the company that made the AI, is talking to the AI, and the AI is basically saying, "Hey, well, I'm like, um, I'm like a million times smarter than you are, and this is what I'm doing, and this is what I'm doing, and this is your part, and you have to do it." Um, so, um, so, so the AI is basically telling the president of the company what to do. Um, so, so anyway, that um, that kind of reminds me of uh, Google Maps. Yeah. So I just hope they're, um, I just hope they're able to control the monster that they're making. Let's hope we can only hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so, 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 what are your uh, what are your other hobbies? You, you you do gardening too, right? Yes, yes. But the gardening has a small garden cabin. It's like it's like a community garden. 
I mean, we have a few of those in Oslo and in Norway too, actually. Uh, it's, it's actually a German idea to make uh, like a community garden for uh, workers who don't have access to, uh, to land, get a small garden to grow vegetables and so on. Because here in the old days, people were poor, like many people were people in a city, workers. They only, only had like money for um, bread and nothing else. And somebody saw, this, saw somebody, somebody saw this garden in Germany. Oh, good idea. It was imported from East Norway. So people enrolled it on vegetables, which were expensive, like for workers. So we got this, we got these gardens also, like it was we like five gardens altogether, like three is two very small and one bit larger and, and a huge one. It's like, it's like a garden plot with a small cabin on them. We can stay in the summer. And uh, I live in this, I have this uh, a, plot, a plot in the smallest garden in Oslo, Etterstad. This from around the turn of, turn of the last century, like 1890, 1900 at that time. And um, my cabin measures about uh, four by four meters. Mm -hmm. And has a loft where I can sleep. And of course, there is about a meter to each neighbor on the side, maybe two or three meters in the back, and I have maybe five or six meters in the front, which is my, my lot. I got um, uh, two apple trees, a plum tree, and um, some bushes that is right now very tiny, but it will go big eventually. I make apple sauce and apple jelly, and I make plum jam, and, and I steal cherry from neighbors, make cherry liqueur. So, so, so it's so it's like this kind of communal garden, or or, or you yeah. all have you all have like a section. We all have a, have a section as our section. Ah, okay. And, and and is that is that by your house, or do you have to go pretty far to get to your garden? That's about, about go about a kilometer. Okay, so not um, not too far. No. And do you, uh, do you usually how do you get there? Do you take the tram or? I walk or or, or I walk. You should walk or go by a bus. I, I walk or bike. I mean, just because it's so close. Okay, so cool, and um, yeah, yeah. So in um, in Bangkok, then pretty much nobody walks like a like a full kilometer uh, because they have um, so 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 there uh, there are so many taxis here, but most uh, uh, most most Thai people use motorcycle taxis. Yes. So like on on pretty much every corner, there are usually like twenty motorcycle ta taxis hanging around, like just just wanting to drive you wherever. Um, and, um, and I'm, I'm super afraid of motorcycles. Yeah. Um, so, so I've, um, I've, I've been on a motorcycle taxi like four times, but only like only when it's like a dire emergency situation. And I like absolutely, absolutely have to like, like absolutely have to get to a certain place and I don't really have any other options, but, um, but, but if you're, if you're not scared of motorcycle taxis, then. Yeah. Uh, I was, I was, I was in Goa. Uh, for a week's work, and, and, and uh, we took a motorcycle taxi to go some, some place, and uh, kind of scary. It was a big, huge motorcycle, and uh, you can't do anything because I was sitting back and holding tight so not fall off. And it's yeah, kind of scary. And I think, think all things, all kinds of falls run through your head. Like, if an accident, what then? You know, it will look and if it fall off, you're like a road rash, and what about doctors? And you know, oh, so. And here, there are no motorcycle taxis in Oslo, only, only all ordinary taxis. Probably, probably because uh, half the year motorcycles are not very suitable for to use, you know, for, for, the, for the, because of the uh, road conditions, you know, ice and so on. And it's, it gets cold here in winter, you know? Oh, um, yeah, actually, I'm, um, I'm not sure about, um, I'm not sure about the weather of Norway, um, but um, how, how cold does it get in the winter? You know, so it can get below about uh, it can get down as far as down as ten below freezing. Okay, so uh, pretty cold. It can be cold yeah, if it gets like the right, right temperature conditions. Yes, but also has a mixture of, of inland temperature and and coastal temperature because we have this long fjord, which gives us a, a, this moderate the inland climate. So we have a fairly mild climate to be to be kind of in the city, inland city even so. So. Um, Right now, it's, it's been uh, miserable for uh, maybe two, or th two or three weeks now, just gray and rainy and wet. It's like most like two or three degrees of Celsius, two, two, two or three degrees, degrees about, about, about freezing, it's just wet and miserable and gray and dark. 
Mr. Escape Dark Outside now. Uh, that's right now, or, or or that's coming up. It's Dark Outside now. Uh, okay. Now. And, and and what um what what time is it there? It's now uh, um three three thirty uh, thirty five. Yeah. Wow. So it, so it's already dark. Yes. Um, and, and what uh, what time did the sun set? Sets around around three three thirty. Okay. And it gets up around the uh, nine ish. So uh, the shortest time of the year is it's the shortest day of the year is, is of course with the, the solstice and about six hours of, of uh, sunlight and the rest is just darkness. Wow. So so how do you um, how do you survive not having uh, not having very much um, sunlight? And and that's actually something that I really like about Thailand because uh, um, what well in in the U.S., then they have day, uh, they have both daylight savings time and or, or daylight saving time, and then um, and then and then uh, we're uh, we're far enough north that um, um, that um, that the sunset goes between the, like like 6 p.m. and like 10 p.m. I think um, where I'm uh, where I'm from, but uh, but in Bangkok, like the sun pretty much always sets at like 6:30 at night. Um, and pretty much always um, like like five or six in the morning. That uh, um, so so like no matter what time of year, it's pretty um, constant because we're just a little bit yeah. above the equator. It's not when you grow up here. When you grew up, when when you have grown up in Norway, you're used to this uh, this uh, climate change or this this changes of, of light and dark. And uh, I'm from Oslo, which is also bad really. It's even worse up, up in the north. They have this, this dark period, you know. Like about about the polar circle, you don't see the sun at all between uh, like November and like in, in like late winter and early spring, no sun at all. But at least we have, at least we have some sun, you know, when it's not cloudy. <laughs> and and uh, but uh, you know, you'll, you'll live for the summer because in the summer is is never gets never gets dark. Now in high, in the like midsummer, doesn't get dark. The sun sets, yes, but it doesn't get dark. It just get, uh, doesn't get you, don't, you don't see the stars in the summer. You just see the, see the moon, you know, because it's too, too bright, too bright for stars. Huh, that's, um, that, uh, that's, that's interesting. I, I always thought, um, I always thought it would at least get dark for a little bit. No. But, um... I said, this, uh, this uh, page about astronomy. It says, that, you know, there's something called like real darkness. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you don't have that also in the summer. So there's no stars. So just, uh, so whenever I go south and it's in the summer and, and, and it's dark and I see stars, it's strange because you know, warmth and stars doesn't mix to me. It's, <laughs> no, it's wrong. <laughs> stars uh, go to go, go to get a bit cold, you know. Winter. Uh, so so is it hard to is it hard to fall asleep in the summertime? Yeah. But uh, you're used to it, but because uh, you sleep, then you sleep less in the summer. You sleep more, sleep more in the winter, basically. Huh. So, so you basically in the winter catch up on your sleep. Yes, that's how you do that. <laughs> cool. So, um, so, 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 so switching. Uh, oh, oh. Um, before we before we talk about cluttering, um, I um, I did an interview about a year ago with a guy from Finland. Um, he um, he was in um, um, he's in he's in Thailand. Um, his name's Tuomo, and um, and and I don't know if you ever read any of Douglas Adams' books, um, like *The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy*. Yes. So, so I think in the I think in the fourth one, uh, or, or it might have been in the in the long dark tea time of the soul. I can't remember which one, but uh, but but one of the uh, one of the books talks about um, Norway and fjords, and um, and and I started I started out the interview with Tuomo um, like mixing up Norway and Finland and they said oh well the reason I really like Finland and the reason I wanted to talk to you is that um, is is I love Finland because it has so many fjords and he's like um, no Finland uh, Finland has like zero fjords oh. I think you're thinking of another country so um, so so anyway we um, we, uh, we 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 sorted it out but um, but um, so. Um, so, um, so, so can you tell me about the? Uh, uh, um, you, you mentioned that uh, that that it has kind of a calming effect on the, or, or like a cooling effect, or, yes, or, or uh, something uh, with the weather. Yes, thank you. Technically speaking, also the Oslo fjord is not a fjord. The fjord is carved out by 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 um, glaciers. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of them on the west coast. 
Nalter, 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 Oslofjord is, is a sort of, a, of, um, of two sides of two um, say mountain sides moving apart. The middle falls down. You get to it, it's called, called a graben in, in, uh, in, um, in uh, geological parlance. So it's not carved out by, by glaciers, it's, it's carved out by, by geological <coughs> sides moving apart, middle falling down. But it, it acts in every other way, it acts, acts, acts as a fjord. And, and um, like I says, it 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 makes it makes for for um, milder for milder winters and and, and um, also milder summers, you know, in, in better summers in Oslo than it, than uh, if it hadn't been there. And um, so so for um, for the folks that haven't read um, Douglas Adams' books, can you explain what fjords are? Well, fjords are results of uh, rivers being river, river channels being taken over by glaciers. During the last, last ice age, and then, then they're, they're carving down those mountain, those uh, former uh, um, river valleys into huge uh, U-shaped valleys. Mm -hmm. Eventually, become, become uh, when the glaciers melt, they become filled with seawater. Uh, so a, a tree fjord has steep sides, steep sides, you know, and, and, and um, a U-shaped bottom. Okay. And, and, uh, is, uh, is, and in the is, end, is the water is the water in the fjord um, salt water or fresh water? Yes. Okay. At, at, and, at the end, at, and at the end of the fjord, there's, there's a threshold. So the fjord, might, the fjord may be deep, but there's a threshold at the very end of it, towards towards the like the open sea, you could say. Mm -hmm. That's a true fjord. Which also fjord doesn't have a threshold because it's it's a result of, the, of a different uh, geological process. Yes. Cool. And and one of the things, uh, um, have have you heard about like fractals and the Mandel brat set? Yes. So um, so so I um, I watched a w w I watched a video. Well, I actually watched like um, twenty videos one uh, um, like um, like a week ago on on fractals and the Mandel brat set. And and one of the uh, one of the things uh, one of the th things they said about um, that the fractals are applied to like measuring the length of a coastline. Um, because um, um, because the the point they made is that if you get granular enough, the um, the length of a coastline is infinite. Um, because yes. like uh, but like if you analyze the grains of sand, then yes. uh, the length of the coastline is is infinite. So so um, so so it's it, it's almost a it's a near impossible prob problem to say how how big is the coastline of Norway, yes. how big is the coastline of England, uh, wh uh, which ones uh, which ones bigger, and um, and 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 um, what I was watching is the fractal uh, fractal work helps to, or, or, or um, they've used fractal work to help define um, define that. So so how do you know about the Mandelbrot set? Oh, uh, I I think I read about it in a magazine called the Omni, perhaps mm -hmm. way back in the eighties, and then. Uh, In the 1880s, we got the computer, a vision computer called the Atiki computer, home computer, so which made. And then somebody made a program to make uh, Mandelbrot set, Mandelbrot pictures on that, which was very cool. And uh, I just kind of liked them ever since, because I, mean, I read about them, because I read about them either, either in Omni or in, in Scientific American, or maybe discovering on those, those magazines, you know, those about stuff. And there's, there's a cool thing. Like look look at the look at the leaf of a fern. A fern is kind of a fractal too, because the leaves look the same, you know, on a small scale up to a bigger scale, you know, and all look the same, you know. Yeah, and 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 that's uh, that's actually exactly how I got into um, uh, fractal fractals too, because I had a um, in the in the nineteen eighties I had a Commodore sixty four. Yes, and um, and and um, I, I subscribed to a couple magazines that um, that had programs in the end. So I um, so, so I spent like a week typing in this uh, typing in various programs, and, and some of the programs were just horrible. Um, it, but but one of the one of the programs that I really liked was the Mandelbrot set um, program. Uh, it was uh, it was pretty simple, but made pretty complex graphics, especially for 
especially for the for the yeah. Commodore 64, and it had it had a zoom feature, so I could just keep zooming, um, zooming in. And and it took a it, it took a long long time to render, but um, yeah. Actually, I found I found a, a basic version of it for a Bazelbug program in a magazine called Byte. Uh, okay. I was just just totally uh, you know uh, spaghetti programming, so I programmed it into so I translated it into Pascal Pascal for the for the my home computer. I took uh, like all night to render a a a, a, a screen though like, and then next time. So <laughs> on night for 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 one screen. Yeah. Back in the days. Cool. Um... Yeah, that's um, that, uh, that's awesome. And so, so are you a computer programmer? I see on your um, I see on your um, book sh bookshelf the one um, the one book title that I can make out is JavaScript. Um, yeah, no, I don't do programming much more anymore. I was really um, into, I was really into it on my, my old computer, but uh, I haven't had had a a, a, a you could say compiler on my on, on Max ever since I started using Max. So. Uh, I just feel around with, with uh, all those things instead. I do. I did. I mean, actually, I did. I did make a website uh, totally by hand. Very simple one. Mm -hmm. Hand code HTML. I mean, with a bit, little bit of Java on the big in the beginning, just to make uh, or CSS actually CSS to be, make some make, make some changes. But otherwise, nah. I use I use I usually I use my computer for other stuff. I do like uh, Photoshop and, and stuff. And I work in, in design for my magazines and stuff. But I like to do do uh, like uh, ad dusting, and I can. To, um, to do what? A bit, a bit of ad dusting. Okay. Like uh, you, and, uh, and what? Um, what? Uh, like you, you take a, a commercial, a commercial like a commercial poster for Pepsi. Uh huh. Take a picture of it and you change the text around and post on Facebook. So we get um, uh, like maximum, maximum taste the sugar into into being. Uh, uh, maximum waste, no taste. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so um, so so, so kind um, kind of like designing memes. Yes, kind of like to do memes. Yes, or this this started back in 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 the in like in high school days when when uh, when back when uh, when uh, when uh, uh, advertisements were were glued to to uh, boards outside the store. So then I friend decided to have a, have some funds. It took a, took a whole board down into my dad's apartment, into my own my apartment because I live close to the store. And I stood in a, in a basement and and changed the electric around and put it back up. And I got some, uh, um, got some, uh, got some, you got some, you got some, lots of credit for that for, from friends for doing that. Uh, it it did some, it did some. Uh, Say uh, in translatable Norwegian puns with with a, with a poster. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, so so what's the uh, what's the uh, what's the best uh, what's the best of these ad um, ad uh, um, what, what do you call them ad ad bursting um, uh, things that you uh, that you've made. And so, and uh, did, uh, did you actually make that one about Pepsi that you that you talked about or is. Is that I, just I, made, I, made, I made three Pepsi versions, or I'll see you. The newest one is uh, 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 Tasty. Out with, with the old Tasty Bold, which we changed into Out with the, with the Bold Tasty Old. And then there was a commercial innovation for, for Coca Cola, so it's a Taste of Christmas, Smoking of Yule, <clears throat> which changed into the Taste of Wool, uh, Smoking of Yule. <laughs> that is uh, J U L became U L L. Yeah, which is uh, okay. Taste of wool. <laughs> <laughs> and I changed that, and I changed that old sign too. And on the my future computer course, I only about sign which changed into the symbol. Uh, I have my shirt here. <clears throat> um, the symbol. It's not. Uh, it's okay. not I made, 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 made a road sign into that symbol uh, because of my computer. Because it is. Just have to do it. <laughs> it's all, 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 all on my Facebook Facebook uh, um, page. Uh, yes. Cool. Um, so, 
so, so moving on to uh, moving on to cluttering. Yes. Um, can, um, can you tell can you tell your your, your story about uh, your story about cluttering, like how um, like like how how you found out about cluttering, how how you found out about um, like like when you became aware of your of your speech and and just just kind of your story with that. Uh, in 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 the the best school that they were or in a small kids school kids school you know um like from from i think third or fourth grade on the board i was harassed by a guy in class even in front of my speech which i hate because i, I tend to get all into lots, into lots of fights with him or my speech to make him making fun of my speech if anything else he, he himself had a structure Maybe he was trying to conceal the structure by, by, by harassing me. I don't know. But I didn't have I didn't know I had a problem with, with my speech, uh, although he making fun of me in, in school. Mm -hmm. And then in, 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 in uh, junior high, no mention of, of speech problems. And in, in, in high school, no mention of it. But uh, but I knew it was fast, but uh, I, I didn't I didn't know it was scattering. Uh, some guy in high school met me like a, 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 a say friend of magazine with old people in, in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and my character was stuttering, which was actually wrong. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was not until uh, in 1990. So, so you know, were you um, were, were you kind of surprised by that, or or um, like because if somebody if somebody had told me. Um, if, if somebody told me, like in college or high school, that I had stuttering, I would I would say, oh, I um, I don't understand why you're saying that. But but I don't know what what your reaction was. I think I said it was kind of wrong because I'm a stutter. I think I said that. I'm a stutter, really. I just speaks fast. I think I said that. Mm -hmm. It's been many years ago. Uh, but anyway, in in 1993, I was kind of pushed into a. Uh, to get in, in touch with you know, which, uh, uh, a state system for, for speech therapy system. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went to their center, which they had done, and talked to a speech pathologist, which then uh, diagnosed me with cluttering. So you, you got cluttering, that's what you have. Cluttering, wow, well, okay. okay. no, I never have, no, I never have a, a, a hook to put it on, you know, it is cluttering. And um, what what year was that again? Uh, sorry, it was, it was, it was, it was been, uh, 96, I think, 96, 97. Yeah. So maybe just, yeah, 96, 97, I think, around that time. Cool. Because I think that's, um, I think that's when I, um, I think that's right around when I was diagnosed too. So that's, yeah. that's interesting. We got diagnosed at the same time. Yeah. And uh, but I didn't, there was nothing much more really got out of it other than uh, getting a note, piece of paper said you have to do because you got co articulation and something else. That's what I had, you know, since the paper. Okay. And uh, nothing really happened until uh, I chose to read a, a, a magazine that comes with a, you know, like a weekend magazine, it comes with a paper as it gets you know, on the door, doormat. I was interviewed with some, uh, with some, um, some guy. So he had some kind of artist, something, a musician or something, something, something. And he said he had he used to have a stutter. And he had gone through this um, um, method, you know, else to go through this, this, this class system, system, you know. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, this method for, for stuttering. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I can't remember that. But anyway. Uh, but he mentioned that, that um, he got, got help through this association, which an association for stuttering and cluttering. Now, what cluttering association? What? So I honed in on that, and I, and I got in touch with them, and I, I, I joined them, and uh, I came to the came to the uh, first uh, annual meeting. And I, I told them I was willing to, to uh, be a member of the board and anything, everything. As soon as I was doing cluttering as well. 
And I was think I was pretty much enrolled as, as an associate faculty member, associate member of the board right then. Um, yeah, but I was an associate member of the board until like maybe a year or something. Yeah, perhaps also then, then they, uh, I remember the board wanted to go, go step down to only be a social member. So I got pushed up to be a full-time member, member of the board. And well, this spring I got like properly elected to a full-time member of the board of the uh, Norwegian Association for Structuring and Chattering. And is that, um, what, um, which which association is that? Is that the, the, the Norway one or like the worldwide the Norwegian one? one? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, um, so, so you're a lot more you're a lot more famous than I thought you were. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I, I've been uh, doing um, an interview a while ago, some years ago actually now, two years ago, three years ago, with the, with a uh, with a master student about stuttering. Mm -hmm. uh, I did, uh, of course, I'm like the person on the board has, has cluttering, you know, I'm the cluttering person on the board. So my, my mission is to, to like uh, spread the word in, inside our so association. And I've done a video, video interview now with, a, with another uh, master student about cluttering. I did a, an interview with, uh, with the, uh, a person on the uh, National Searching Network, I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, about cluttering. <clears throat> And uh, uh, I'm probably going to do more, more interviews with, with, about cluttering later uh, with the more, more and more students, I don't know. And on the, the, actually, on, on, on this, uh, this year's uh, I don't meeting, we had, uh, like we had these people, these um, master students uh, on video, on the, on the big screen. So I went up and talked to them about cluttering. So, so, and, so and, and talk and I also talk to, to the uh, like the audience about cluttering. Like I'm the cutting person on the board and so on, so on. And um, uh, yeah, I'm doing an interview interview with, with you now. Now, <laughs> cluttering, which is also very cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is uh, this is awesome. It's really uh, it's really cool. Um, talk, um, well, well, it's really cool talking to you in person uh, like this. We uh, we chat on like like instant messenger all the time. And um, and like comment on each other's Facebook posts, but it's it's really cool to do this interview. Um, so, um, so 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 going back to um, go, going back to when you first went to speech um, therapy, yes. um, how how or who dragged you into speech therapy? Because um, it sounds like my ex wife, uh, my ex wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, she, she, because because uh, uh, she was American. So in the beginning, we, we only spoke English in our home. Mm -hmm. Of course, she was a nurse, so to speak, so to work as a nurse, and we have to speak Norwegian at a certain level. So then she, she, she went to Norwegian classes, and uh, but when I spoke Norwegian to her, she didn't understand me. So, this, so we kept speaking English in the home all the time. I actually still do speak English when I meet. Uh, but uh, I won't play around with, 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 uh, the, with delayed auditory feedback. You know, I'm using my phone and head, pair of headphones. I spoke to her in Norwegian, and then she understood me. Otherwise, I have to speak oh, to her. So, so, so when, you, um, uh, when you use the delayed auditory feedback headphones, then, uh, then she could understand your Norwegian? Yes. Uh, so, so how, um, be, um, because I think, I think that would be really tough, like like from her perspective, to be able to tell. Uh, oh well, um, is, is is CL just um, just not that good at English, or does CL have a, a a speech a speech problem? So so how did um, how did your ex wife um, like decide? Hey, well this um, this what I'm hearing is a speech problem, so you need to go to the speech therapist. I mean, because uh, Norwegian was terrible to her, and she didn't, not, didn't uh, understand. Oh, uh, so, so does she? Does she speak Norwegian really well? No, she does. Yes. Oh, okay. But she, back then, it was uh, she was. You know, we were, I'm fluent in English, but uh, I think I could less. I think I, I thought I could less English Norwegian, but uh, in my interview with, with this other guy on Second Network, I was uh, really affecting badly in English. So. 
Um, but um, I think I took a lesson in English because, uh, you know, I feel fairly fluent in English. I still have to uh, kind of find the words more in English than I do in Norwegian. Mm-hmm. So I, th- I slow down. Whereas Norwegian, I just, I just go I'm a mile a minute, then I, I get hard to understand. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, so so that um, I I think you I, I think you answered my next question, which is which uh, which language is your cluttering um, b- um, better or worse? And yes, um, and, and um, could you talk um, could you talk about that a little bit more? Um, like um, cluttering in Norwegian versus cluttering in um, English? No, it, it's basically, it's basically the same. You, you eat syllables and and you speak fast. And uh, you, you uh, sure, and it's probably some hate words there too in English. Um, uh, institution is easy to say in, in English, but uh, in Norwegian it's called the institute. And uh, uh, it used to be called the stops on the tram in the old days. And uh, it was a uh, stop called the Nobel Institute. No? Well, Nobel, Nobel Institute. Nobel Institute. No, it's it's kind of it's, it's, it's many syllables. So you had, it's, it tends to be com, com, contracted. You know, it's so hard to say for me in Norwegian. Also, university. Uh, the top called the University of Lindan. Norwegian was uh, uh, Universitet Lindan. Universitet Lindan, and it's a it's a mouthful, you know, and and I hate those long words in Norwegian. So it, it tend to be. Uh, Compressed, com- compacted, compacted into like uh, uh, you say, like, maybe perhaps the first and the last syllable, and we'll just get muddled together in Norwegian, especially. Uh, English English has, has its own problems, but um, uh, uh, Norwegian is famous, like, like almost all Germanic languages, it has, it has, you can make compound words. Long words with new meanings, kind of from uh, from other words, like motor car, motor and motor and, and car, uh, 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 the club, you know, mm-hmm. railway club in English, two words, right? <laughs> Onwards in Norwegian, and so we, you can make long words of many words, which can be difficult to um, sometimes to pronounce. So. Um... So that's a um, that's that's really uh, that's really interesting. So so with um, and and I don't I don't know like, like I'm not aware if I compress very much. I don't think um, I don't think I do um, compress too much. No. And especially like especially when I'm talking on on videos um, because I'm uh, like, like like on videos, then I'm I'm pacing my speech um, just because um, just because I want to be like understandable. So 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 on videos, I'm never actually like talking like my normal. Well, I still, um, I still care. You 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 have to uh, uh, I'm, 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 you know that, that kind of stuff. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can hear you're a torturer. Although you're 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 really fluent now, but I hear you, you're a you're a torturing thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and um, and 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 it's kind of uh, it's kind of it's kind of situational too. Like if I yes. um, like, like I could uh, I could have like a like a breakdown pretty easily if I have like a whole bunch of stuff on my head and and I'm trying to like I'm trying to say it in, in like a nice um, in a nice way and it's and I need to say it like right away then then my speech will just like go all over the place yes. and so um, and so so especially like uh, like especially in a, in a video like this and, and most of uh, most of what I have recorded is like my YouTube videos so um, so so in uh, in those uh, in those videos I don't I don't actually like um, comp- compress very much but uh, but but actually my uh, uh, this is a long introduction to my question about compression. Um, so, so like what I, I know when I do compress, then I, I then I just compress words. Um, so, um, so, so, so like like the word cluttering, I might say cutting, or um, um, but but very uh, but very very fast, like drop out um, drop out some of the um, stuff. Like the, like that's something that I know I I I do, or like 
or like I kind of stopped myself saying, oh, well, um, just you have to go back and do that work again because um, it's not actually um, like, like you missed it. But, um, oh, oh so, so my question is because Norwegian has so many compound words, um, like, um, like, do you ever, um, do you ever drop, uh, um, do you, uh, on a big, long, gigantic word, do you ever drop like a lot of the syllables? And then, and, and then kind of my second question is, do you ever compress like a phrase together? Or do, do you ever compress two words together? Or, or is it just like one word that you compress together? I think it's all in a way. Depend depending on situation, of course. Uh, like you know, if I'm stressed and nervous, uh, it can be uh, very, very fast. Uh, like all the words will come out at once, like. Um, and it depends, like it's situation dependent a lot. And um, I guess the same thing is struggling. If, if you're a bit excited or nervous, you can speak, you speak very fast. Or mm -hmm. your, your, problem, your problem gets worse, is that what you say? Um, um, I noticed when I uh, read a text, I can uh, I also I can omit syllables, you know, and, and uh, I also can eat I eat syllables and I can also eat words too. Uh, like every year, uh, the king gives a speech to the parliament, mm -hmm. about uh, the state of your country, whatever. It's a very short speech, you know. And we had this uh, workshop in uh, a couple of years ago in, in my association. Uh, it was for, for Structuring. Uh, people, most people are going to uh, to uh, like a class to read this this uh, speech, learn learn speech and read it enough to, to the other people in this uh, group. I was doing something else. I could join it, but I even so I, I read, my, read the speech myself and, and read it to my computer and recorded it. And I thought, wow, I just ate that word. It's like a whole word was got, got a small word got eaten. I was so um, eaten meaning um, like you didn't pronounce it at all, or eaten meaning yes. like, like that you made like like a sound, but not actually the word. Maybe just I, I can't quite remember. I think I just forgot the whole word. It was jumped uh, from the word to the next sentence. It was, it was a small word at the end of a sentence. It just got just it disappeared totally. Um, I've, I've read like a, a fun poem uh, to uh, people in my garden. And to uh, some people, all the people I know, like a group of people I know fairly well. And uh, then I, I've uh, read a poem to myself like three or four times, just uh, try to learn a text and then read it aloud to myself, make sure I get all the words properly in. And uh, even so, I, it, it goes fairly fast. I think I made, uh, I made, I made uh, actually, some people recorded me doing that, reading a poetry, poetry to my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, I, put, I think I put it on YouTube, so I sent it to you perhaps, and, and you, made, you, you commented on it. Because it was, if I, I'll do my best to go slow. And even so, it was fast. And it's really strange. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think I do everything. I, I eat words, I eat syllables, and uh, I can press innovation. Uh, but it's, it's kind of hard to do, do it uh, you know, on screen, but. Um, like I read, I read some, some small text to myself with and without uh, lead, lead or direct feedback. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that with the feedback, uh, things did get slower. Like if a text took, took, one minute, took one minute without, it took like one and a half minute with uh, feedback. So it, it means I did slow down to get more syllables, get everything, get everything uh, properly read. You know? it's, it's, so it's a help, but like you say, they say you can't, you said all the time because you get used to it. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like, I can't do that work because uh, there's too much noise at work. In transit, there's radio going on, there's people talking, there's noise outside traffic, and also you can't have these things, this thing on because you, you get everything delayed like uh, your ear all the time, so that won't work. So it will it, 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 work like person to person, but like not, not the noise, you can't pay or borrow something, it will work person to person. Mm -hmm. then I, I think it's a good tool to use uh, to be aware of your speech. And if you want to like uh, practice, but I don't think you can't use it all the time, I think. 
So, so another question on cluttering is if uh, if someone was watching this video and and didn't know anything about cluttering and um, and then listen um, listen to you and said, oh well, your your speech kind of sounds normal um, no, um, normal to me. Um, and and obviously you're a lot better now than you were uh, before. But um, but like how um, how how could someone tell that you have cluttering now? I think I still reasonably fast and. and uh... I think I explained fairly well how I, I speak fast. Mm -hmm. uh, especially on the, on the video, on the, on the, on the uh, study network, where I, I really go fast talking about stuff. I was a bit nervous too then, you know, because it's, I didn't really know the guy from before. I kind of know you, so... Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, uh, well, I don't, I don't start to really. Stuttering is different from this. Stuttering is a totally different different uh, thing. That's the rest of the word. Uh, Stutterers, you know, they have they speak at a normal rate when 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 it gets stuck from the from get the record stuck in the groove. But you know, it gets stuck in the groove, and then they get unstuck. The speed and rate is normal. Whereas we just uh, we just race ahead and uh, like we eat we eat syllables, we eat words, we we we. we uh, we're just fast, quick, quick. We're fast, not listening, quick thinkers, but we're very fast speaking. And we don't, we don't really structure really. And um, that's the main difference. Uh, and um, I don't feel no better way to explain to really, that, other than that we are very fast. And we, we eat syllables and birds. <laughs> <clears throat> cool. That's uh, that's a good explanation. And um, another question is um, so. Um, so you were uh, you, you were diagnosed in the in in the nineties and now it's uh, uh, now it's a few years later than that. Yes. Um, how um, how has your speech improved? Like what's uh, what uh, what's what's different? What's better about your speech now? I think or, it's, or, I think it's, or, I think it's the same actually. Pardon me from interrupting. I think it's the same, uh, but at least I'm aware of it now. I, I know what the whole problem is, and I, I'm. Um, uh, I can use the alter feedback or uh, that all this uh, uh, what is it called um, HAF. Now I, I, I have tried really, but I can try and use that too. Mm -hmm. um, I just need to monitor my speech and try to think about what, what I say. Actually, when I spoke to to, to the uh, congregation uh, at the uh, this uh, uh, meeting. I was speaking on the microphone, and, uh, and I heard, heard my voice over the speakers, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, made me uh, speak slower because you hear yourself speaking. I think, I think that's kind of like HAF, which uh, Mr. Um, uh, Yvonne spoke spoke about wrote about. Yeah, when um, when, uh, when I was doing the videos with Yvonne, then I realized that uh, um, that, that that's um, that, that's basically what she's been describing is as H H A F heightened auditory feedback, yes. and, and and actually like most um, mo mo most DJs do that. Uh, like like I always watch the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, um, and and like most on most of the podcasts he's wearing he's wearing headphones, um, and um, and that's just like piping his voice um, back into his. Uh, back into his ears, and uh, and so I think uh, like one of my theories is that's that's a technique to to get the like um, radio voice or the like TV announcer voice is to uh, is to basically have heightened auditory feedback and, and wear um, wear, uh, wear a microphone so you can or wear a microphone so you can um, kind of hear your um, hear your voice and then um, and then when uh, when uh, when you do that you uh, you kind of naturally like talk. More talk more fluent talk uh, talk better. Yes, um, uh, I, just, uh, that's 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 uh, how it looks. Yes. Um, so, uh, so so I did have a uh, I did have kind of a kind of a mishap with um, uh, with that in making one of my videos because um, so 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 I like my personality is I don't I, I don't want to be like intrusive I don't want to like like push push someone else too much um, and so uh, and so like. Like um, growing up, I always w uh, wouldn't ever want to talk louder than I needed to, um, uh, which w uh, which is good in most in most cases. But like like sometimes, especially like making a uh, uh, making a video or 
or, or, or like giving giving a public presentation, you uh, you have to uh, you have to kind of push your voice like above where uh, above where like the minimum amount to be able to be heard. So, uh, so, so so in one of my first videos where I was wearing a a, a headphone, um, it, it was a jigsaw puzzle video, and I was um, like, like I put together jigsaw puzzle while I was like, like talking the whole time. And I realized, like, and it was a super long video, like, like two hours, because, because um, <laughs> um, it was a pretty, it was like a 300 piece jigsaw puzzle, and, and I realized, um, I realized about like an hour and a half into it that because I was hearing my voice, then I was, I was um, getting, getting quieter and quieter and quieter. So, um, so, so I was like talking so that I could hear my voice and not, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and and not very much louder. And so, so, so I so. Uh, um, so, um, so then I was like, oh yeah, um, I need to, um, I need to make sure that I don't like, like that while I'm wearing my headphones, I'm, I'm talking to the other person. I'm not talking to myself. Yes. Um, because, uh, um, because, uh, because yeah, it was a, it was, it was a kind of weird, uh, it was a kind of weird feedback loop where I just kept talking. And, and, and then when, when I noticed, I was like, wait a minute, I'm, I'm whispering, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you do. I, I don't think it's going to pick up on my YouTube. But uh, but um, but uh, but anyway, my uh, I, um, with my jigsaw puzzle videos, I think um, I think only like five people each have watched those, so um, <laughs> so I don't think it matters too much. But it was uh, but it was just, okay, just uh, an interesting uh, thing. Speaking of of uh, voices, you know, um, it's also been said that the Tatars tend to be very soft spoken, and that that we have uh, a poor um, uh, monitoring of our speech volume. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when I'm on a subway with friends or in a noisy, in a noisy environment with friends, and I speak and I say, say speak, speak louder. You so you speak louder, but then I feel like I'm all this shouting, and that's yeah, because I, I I feel like I'm shouting and I just try to speak louder, and that's that's really strange. And that's that's apparently one more one more uh, uh, side effect of that thing. You tend to be very soft spoken. I've read or heard. Oh, and that's um, that's that's interesting. I um, I knew that um, I knew that like um, I knew that like adjusting adjusting volume is very very difficult. But I didn't realize that folks with cluttering were on the like softer like, like kind of aired on the softer side of things, which um, which makes uh, which makes sense because like my grandma would always say, "Oh, I can't hear anything that you're saying." Yes. Um, and um, and and I think it, um, she um, she, um, she was going deaf, and I and like like now I know enough about speech where I could where I could probably talk loud enough so a person going deaf can understand me. But but back then, uh, back then I just didn't have any techniques to um, like raise my voice or lower my voice. Oh, and that uh, that example that I gave uh, like five five minutes ago of me talking quiet and talking loud. Like, uh, like, like that's something that's something that I couldn't have done like when I was thirty years old. Uh, like, like if somebody said, um, if somebody said, "Oh, talk, talk louder, talk quieter," um, and 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 that's kind of like that's kind of nerve nerve wracking anyway. Like, like I, um, I was in a uh, I was in a meeting. So I, I was in a meeting, and somebody said, "Hey, you you talk, uh, you talk louder." Like basically, they said you need to talk louder, and pointed pointed this woman, and she, uh, um, um, she, uh, she she tried, but she uh, um, she was never uh, um, she, um, she wasn't a very loud person, and just got really really nervous and 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 flummoxed, and so 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 I realized oh well it's um, it's not it's not just people with cluttering, it's not it's not oh. just me. That's a um, uh, that um, like like adjusting adjusting volume. Um, especially like on demand, like saying, "Oh well, uh, like like people aren't um, people don't have like a knob um, where <laughs> where you can turn um, turn up and turn down." And, and then especially especially folks like you and me, it's really really difficult to acquire that skill set to yeah um, to sure. go down. So um, so so have you have you gotten better at speaking loud, speaking quiet? Or, or um, I don't know really. I mean, I, I was, I didn't get get, get uh, heard on, on in this uh, um, a garden community thingy, uh, and I didn't get heard on, on this uh, other gathering. This this poetry, this poem, and I actually did. I actually once tried to to, uh, to to hold a um, 
speech is not a word to to the uh, to the uh, local uh, local um, local community uh, political community this data yeah <clears throat> but uh, I was. I was, I didn't get hurt, but my problem was I was very nervous, you know, people I didn't know at all. And, I, and I, my, my, my speech was way, was way too long because you had five minutes to your speech. And my speech was long, <laughs> five minutes, it turned out. Oh, you know, <laughs> uh, no. So um, uh, I think you can speak loud if I had to, but um, the name is, is, is kind of hard to know what, what is loud. I'm allowed loud enough now, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like, it feels like I'm shouting when I'm just trying to, when I'm just totally speaking. I feel like I'm shouting when I'm told to speak, speak up, you know? That's uh, difficult, yes. Oh, and so, um, since, you, um, since you knocked on your table, then I can't, um, um, you, um, I can only see like uh, this much yeah, of you. I can't do that, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, much, uh, my, uh, much. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So, so any, um, so, 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 do you have any techniques to, uh, um, or, or, or is that something you work on? Um, is that something you work on at all? Like being able to, to do that, or, 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 um, what, um, what would you say? Like, like when you're trying, when you're trying to improve your speech, what, what do you do? When I. Try to do that. I think I try to speak slower and make sure I get everything in order. But it's 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 hard um, because it's hard because it's 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 hard because it's it's so so much a part of your of a person. And um, like I have this video about tutoring somewhere, uh, and uh, and um, there's a guy there uh, who's who's headers, and he kind of he gets sort of cured. And his speech is monotone. It's like very slow and has this monotone. When it, it, but, but before we asked Kelly Tucker, he was much more live, much more lively person. <laughs> so um, I think uh, so. I think the tutoring is part of me. I can't do anything about that really. I can't. But what I can do is, I just I think I just have to to, to think about my speech and the situation I, I, I'm speaking in. Uh, um, like when I'm on the tram and something happens, and I have to take speak to the customers, the, the people on the tram about something, something, something. Then I have to and I have to think about what to say, you know, uh, and then trying to make sure you get understood. And often, sometimes, often they come up and ask, tell me, oh, what, what did you say? I'm speaking, they didn't, they didn't understand you. And I don't, then I don't really know if it's me, my speech, or it's the last speaker system. That's that's poor, you know, because sometimes it's really poor. And that's you have to just like. Into microphones, all times you have to be like this far away from the microphone to make, make the same uh, amount of level of, of speech back in the tram. Um, of course, you can you, you you feel it pretty fast, but even so, um, it's because I think I I was speaking I was spoken clearly enough on the speakers, and apparently I haven't done it done it, done it after all. Uh, that's. And that can be, that's a bit frustrating sometimes. I try to, to tell the dispatcher uh, on the radio about something on the line, and he answers me like he hasn't understood me at all. That's kind of in his frustrating too. And of course, if touching is worse when you're tired. When excited, I mean, when you're tired. And um, when you're tired, your brain is like uh, waiting to, to the tar, and then it's, then it's uh, so your speech could not get really muddled. I mean, you, 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 you um, yeah, I think it's, I think I tend to eat, eat syllables then too, and, and make it gets just, you know, clogged up. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I have to, I have to be like, uh, I have to be awake, you know, to, to make a clear speech. And uh, when, when it works shifts, like I do, you, it's almost, it's almost, you, you are tired when you're at work. But I used to drive all kinds of shifts like from early morning to late evening. But uh, when I get older, it's getting harder. You change to like change your day around. Mm -hmm. So now I just drive evenings, which is fine for me because I've mostly been a late state, a B person. 
Uh-huh. So I work, but uh, you must know, so I can be be uh, sort of a bit tired in the evening, you know, and then and then, and then uh, my speech can be either false or muddled. I don't I'm not entirely certain what it's like. But that's one of the challenges you face with an actor. You don't you don't always get understood. Mm-hmm. So you get this, this you get, so you get this, this like this glossy stare or uh, like uh, like the, the scene in in uh, Life of Brian. Where uh, Brian is uh, interrogated by uh, by um, Pilate in his palace, mm-hmm. and uh, um, Pilate, sa- Pilate says something, and the centurion doesn't understand him. You know, like like him, centurion, very hard, and uh, and the uh, centurion just asks, uh, "If I was officer, you know, it's, 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 you get this answer that is is told out of context because they, they have." So you have, have to understood what you said, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, that's also uh, frustrating. You get you get misunderstood, you know. <laughs> that's uh, but you know that that's life as Peter. You be you are occasion you are occasion or often misunderstood. That's you know that's a little bit. You you can you, you can uh, you can do practices, you know, but. Uh, they like mostly work if you, if you try to read a text something, if I read it, if I want to read something from, to you from this book, you know, then I'll make sure I get everything right. Or if I, but uh, when I'm doing like free speech, it's, it, it's, it's hard because then you, 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 um, you forget yourself, you get uh, carried away by what you're talking about. Then uh, everything you, you might have learned is lost, you know. Yeah, uh, makes uh, makes sense. So, um, so, so I think we're um, I think we're about out of out of time. Any uh, any final um, any final thoughts or or comments on cluttering or uh, or, or or advice for other people with cluttering? Uh, cluttering is real. Cluttering, cluttering exists. Uh, we're about to we have about to, we are, about to, as many cluttering as uh, cluttering, but we lesser now. But we are here. We exist. We are here, and. Uh, Advice: um, If if you if you are able, find a find a good spirit, find a spirit therapist, speech therapist that will give you give you some advice about how to get about with the country. Because if you get a good advice, I'm certainly you, you can uh, learn to to cope with it, mm-hmm. and you, but you'll probably get some good advice and you'll get some good techniques to. Uh, like uh, monitor, monitor yourself while you speak, so you don't uh, speak so fast. You can get get more, get slower, get get more more uh, more co- coherent. If that's the word. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cool. So uh, so 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 um, great advice, and thanks for uh, thanks for always um, um, spreading uh, spreading awareness and, and helping people to understand. And uh, thanks thanks very much for doing this video. It's been really really cool talking to you. Um, about um, about about everything. So uh, so thanks very much. Thank you.